Hello and welcome to Moonland Studio. My name is Albert. Today we're going to modify this Nerf destructor that I'm going to post a picture of right next to me. And we're going to explore the challenges, the tools, and the process it takes on modifying a Nerf destructor into a sci fi movie from. Also, my reasoning for it is that this sci fi movie prop will be used in a short film. And the studios that it's going to produce. So join me. Let's learn together, and let's see what we can create. So let's start by seeing what tools we need, such as a utility knife, a ruler, super glue, could be any super glue, a marker, sandpaper, sixty or one hundred fifty. Great. A glue gun, a Dremel tool, and a cute dog. So now we're going to look over what we're going to modify, remove anything we don't need, such as the foam ammunition that comes with the gun, because this gun is not intended to shoot ammo, it's more for a sci-fi prop. Now I'm looking at all the spots that I need to take out the labels, the titles. Any warnings, maybe. I'm gonna look at both sides because you never know. As you can see, one side has a large name and a logo. We're gonna have to remove all that. We're going to double check, look, kind of record in our mind what we're going to do with the sanding. Now I take a 60 grit sandpaper and I start sanding it down. Put a little power into it, not too much, but make sure you, know, you get it out. You do a lot of sanding when you mod things. Probably the most that you're going to do is sanding. I mean, you know, always. Double check the areas. Really get the areas sanded well. The better you, you do your prep work, the easier it becomes later. And sanding and sanding. It's not an exciting part, but it's something that has to be done. So here we have our sanded pistol. And right there I'm deciding I don't wanna I don't want the chamber, so that's gonna come out. An extended barrel would be nice. I'm looking at shapes that might fit here and create like a good look for the gun. Maybe even a scope on top. But even with all the prep work, all the ideas you have, there's always a possibility of things changing. So right now we're gonna take out all the little screws so we can remove some of the internals that we don't need for our sci-fi film prop. You wanna keep the screws because we're gonna put it back together later. You and we're going to fill up the holes of the screws so we can create a more fluent look to the gun, a more realistic look. I'm double checking anywhere else that might have a screw, a screw that has to come out, any pieces I could remove. Always find one or two that we missed. And of course, you get eager, you're already, already thinking about what's it going to look like later, but step by step, 
Now we're going to take it apart. Remove the internals that we don't need. We can always use this later for another prop. It's a pretty cool shape. Looks pretty cool. And all I really want is the trigger to work. I don't need most of the stuff in here. But again, all the pieces that we will remove, we could use for another, another project in the future. I know I want to put an extended barrel, so we're going to move this because we're not going to need it. And there are a couple of tricks that you could do as far as uh, adding weight to it, but for this prop one, we don't need to. What we're focusing on is how to add a large cartridge in the front, Send a barrel, what might get in the way. We need these pieces in the middle. I don't feel like we do because, again, this is not going to be, in, it's not going to actually sh physically shoot anything. But we do always want to keep in mind that a trigger must work to have some realism to the gun. You want to look at the mechanicals of the trigger. It's very simple in these guns. Basically a spring. Let's see. Boom. Now we're looking for any place that we may have to sand or cut. Here's a Dremel tool with the sanding bit on it. We're going to try to sand away some parts. Always be careful. Wear safety glasses. And do little by little. You don't want to overdo it. Do little by little. You could do, if you have the part that you're going to put in there already, next to you, you could do a test fit. See how snug it is. Maybe we have to sand a little more, maybe not. That's what we're testing out right now. Looks like it fits pretty well. We could just put the screws back in. But before that, we're gonna use some glue. To keep it held in there so it doesn't wobble. Always, always double check. It looks pretty cool. It also will add some weight, so it'll make the gun feel really good for the actor in their hand. It won't feel like an empty prop. Here I'm applying some hot glue. You could use hot glue or CA glue, super glue. You only need to put glue where it's gonna contact the gun. There might be areas that doesn't contact the gun, they're floating, those areas don't need glue, but you Definitely want to have glue where it contacts the gun. You want to hold it there for a while so it sets. You can see it's set. And now I feel comfortable putting this back together. You 
can always already see what the shape is going to look like, you know, the, the mass of the gun compared to what it was before. Again, a simple screwdriver, nothing fancy needed. We're going to go around and attach everything, all the screws. All these screws are going to be covered with some kind of bondo or filler that we can put. I'm looking right now because I want to put like an extended ammo area there to make, to create a bigger mass, a more imposing looking uh, gun. And here I'm going to use a Dremel tool to cut away some of the unneeded areas that might, that's definitely going to get in the way of putting, of, of that, uh, Extended ammo area. Again, always wear some kind of glasses, safety glasses. And do this slowly because these Dremel tools cut really, really well. And I'm adding glue to any areas that me contact with with the gun so it sets well. Here I'm gonna cut a PVC pipe that I had lying around so I can create a nice sci-fi looking shape to the top of the gun. PVC pipes are cheap, easy to cut, easy to sand, easy to work with. And nice always to have a good supply around if you're gonna do props. They always come in handy. sand it down, clean it up. I'm using 60 grit sandpaper here. Now I'm going to cut this in half because my idea is to have half on each side of the gun to create a balanced look. The Dremel tool I'm using is a really old Dremel tool that was around the house, nobody was using it. And it still works like brand new. It's an amazing tool. It really speeds up your work and your progress because you could always cut this with a blade or a saw or something. The Dremel tool is just that much easier and then not expensive at all to have. Again, we're going to sand down a little bit. Now I'm test fitting the 
parts. You can see the kind of look I'm going for. I like to use the word mass, but there's other words like imposing. You know, so here I'm going to use some super glue. Super glue is wonderful, it sets really fast. You could also ha uh, buy an uh, accelerator that helps the glue dry faster and hold faster. But in reality, I mean, these super glue set like within 20 seconds or something, like probably less. You can see that I'm concentrating the glue in the areas that I know that's gonna that I test fitted it on and that's gonna contact all the time. Keep that in mind. There's no need to put glue in areas that are not gonna make contact. I know it sounds silly that I have to say that, but something that a lot of people do, they over glue and they don't need to. I found this plumber's piece in my house. I have no idea what it was doing in my house, but it looked like a cool barrel. You could see again with the super glue going around. P Greebly pieces like the plumber's barrel, PVC pipe, always come in handy for different projects. It doesn't matter if you're doing a film a prop gun, or buildings, or UFOs, or a desert scene with, with abandoned statues or something. You can see I've added the scope there off camera. Everything's pretty set here. Now I'm just double checking, but I'm thinking that a couple of details would go well. So I'm going to use some acrylic here to add add here a couple of lines and it's basically prop cardboard cardboard that uh, I'm cutting let's add a couple of lines a little details to, to give it a more of light so it doesn't look too flat. Once you score it, it's easy to just bend and pop. You can see I put filler in the screw holes. So we don't so when we paint we don't see those screw holes. In the back I realized that it could use some little more detail. I actually found these empty razor blade holders that actually like look pretty cool like has a cool aeronautical design that would go good with the gun all I'm going to do is sand it because if you sand the prop it's going to be easier to glue and st stick on and all you have to do is add a couple of dots of glue Super glue is really strong. Just a couple of dots. Hold it in place for a little while. And here I am going outside. dog watching over me and making sure I'm doing my job correctly. If you're spraying outside you have to consider the wind.
as you can see, it was moving around, so I decided to like tie it up horizontally so it'd be easier to spray. The wind was too strong that day. This is a much easier way to spray. I should have done this in the beginning, but you try, you test, you learn. You're gonna give it like two coats, like one really quick cover and then a second cover to make sure you got all the spots done. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. Thank you for joining me. It feels great, it looks great. As you can see, I accidentally, accidentally tested it out before on my dog. Uh, it, I really enjoyed this one. This is my first sci-fi gun prop. I look forward to doing many, many more in other props, buildings, rocket launchers, UFOs. So don't forget to subscribe, like, Comment below, please comment below. Tell me what you want to see. You know, what I could have done differently. And I look forward to making my next video and you watching. Thank you so much. Bye.